All right, before we went on the break, we were talking about alternative source of power and dealing with the energy crisis in Nigeria. And our guest, Raymond, was just saying the best way to deal with it is to switch from hydro to solar. But apart from solar, like Praise rightly said, aren't there other sources government should embrace? Well, and um, we also uh, uh, earlier said we're going to bring Brighton to give me to join us on the discussion. He's known in this part of the country for uh, inventing different kinds of solar, um, should I say, power, uh, sources. Uh, apart from inverter batteries and solar panels, there are other things he does as an inventor. And that makes me remember that we're also doing Intellectual Property Day. That mm, was yesterday, does, I guess. Yeah. So it's, it's all in comparison. So we have Brighton's Ogemi in the house, and we have Raymond Edokba. Mm. Two of them are into alternative source of energy, and we're just going to be dealing with this. Now, we rightly asked uh, Mr. Raymond before we brought you in um, alternative sources of power, and he said windmill, um, biomass, and um, hydro. Okay, no, apart from hydro biomass and solar windmill, but are they other we should look into? Of course, um, there are too many alternative sources to hydro electricity power generation. I will list if I begin to explain some of them. Apart from this hydro electricity uh, power generation, which to me, I begin to see that uh, it's longer working in Nigeria because it divided into three stages. We have too many problems with generation. After generation, we have too much problem with the transmission. After the transmission, we have another too much problem with distribution. <laughs> That's the truth. Dr. So, I'm not painting things. Mm. I'm not painting. If you want me to explain why I say we have problem, we will not live here. But no, you have to. You have to. You have now, to. Okay, let me. Mm. Okay, if it's, if it's, I should say why mm. now. The generation of the power. The equipment that we met or that we, we, we grew to come and meet are mainly what we saw the colonial masters did for us. They are old, they are, they are becoming oscillated by the day. They are no longer in trend with modern day society and advancement of development in, if you travel to advanced countries and see, compare it. Then, the transmission lines, problems, Sometimes you generate uh, uh, so much megawatts to transmit it to get to the end point is a problem. Transmission lines are all obsolete. Most majority of them are obsolete. Mm. Let me not use the word or majority are obsolete. The distribution power, the distribution of it, another problem. Now, see, the, the, the greatest challenge we have in this country is the communities are expanding. Go to advanced countries. Apart from you, giving people time planning on how to do this, do that, do that. You see people come, they'll tell you, this community is expanding. This is the kind of transformer you are supposed to be using in the next 10 years. In the next 15, 20 years, this transformer will be obsolete because people are parking into the community, people are building houses. They are buying electronics. They are putting ACs. They are putting freezers, washing machines, what have you. You don't know that this is consumed power. They consume power, of course. Then by the time you total the total generation of the power consumption rate, it's too much for the transformer. Then today the transformer will pack up. Then when the transformer pack up, it becomes another story for another day. How are you going to fix the transformer and all to go into all those ones? <laughs> then that becomes another problem again. Then distribution issue, transmission, voila, generation, another one. You see, this uh, the truth is, if the government wants to fix power, for God's sake. Go to a neighboring country. I visited Ghana. I went to Ghana and I took a study of what the Ghanaian energy power supply looks like. I'm not talking of, of, of the US or UK. Those ones are too far. Ghana here. That constant power for God's sake. Mm. Maybe you have not been there. I've been there. I'm talking about what I have been to. What I have been to. I'm not just speaking because somebody is telling me what to say. I'm telling you my own experience. I'm talking of traveling into advanced country. Ghana. West Africa, in case you don't know, is our neighboring country here. You can even use a, bo a bus to pass through the border if you don't want to take a flight. Now, let me go through to where I feel that uh, there are other sources of power supply. For example, let's not go there. There is nuclear energy power generation. In Nigeria. We have not even gone to that. <laughs> we have not solved the other system. We have to go to nuclear, nuclear power generation. We can't even go there. 
That's another source of power generation, an alternative source of power generation. Now we're talking about wind mill. If you look at the the northern part of the country, mm. you will see enough wind. Nigeria can station wind mill in the northern aspect of the country. This the, also in the northern aspect of the country, we have so much. We are the other side. We are close to some of the deserts. We can go and put solar power generation. Go to advanced countries and see how they arrange solar panels. They, they don't even have where to put it. They put it on the, in the sea. On the sea, that's where they arrange their own solar panels on the sea because they don't have enough land mass. They don't have enough land spare and uh, mass to play with. We can put this solar panel in those regions and then you begin to generate enough power. Let's not go to that one. There are other, the only thing is solar generation is expensive. In all sincerity, why did I say solar is expensive? I have been into renewable energy power generation as a person, as a company for years. And uh, I discovered that when people use solar panels, one of the kickback disappointment or, or disadvantage is after some years, you need to replace the batteries. Is the truth. They are called deep circle batteries. Those batteries must go through their normal circle life, depending on the way the person is going to be using it, you can finish your circle life of your deep circle battery in a year, you can finish it even in six months, you can finish it in two years or three years. But when that happens, renewable energy we know is clean, but you need to replace the battery. It becomes another burden to Nigerians. Okay. And that's why we are now looking at another phase, biogas generation, of power. Now let me let me let me explain what I mean by biogas generation of power. You see, uh, like you know, I'm into invention, innovation. Yesterday was the Tajar Party Day, World Tajar Party Day. A lot of people came to see young young, young mind displaying so many things at my complex uh, uh, as, at my complex. But let me now tell you something. Biogas seems the way to go. Seems the best alternative of alternative source to power generation. Why does this rule? One, we are looking at generation of power using waste. Now, people we poo poo. I don't want to use, uh, yeah. I don't know the language to yeah, use no, that people can good. understand. <laughs> physics, you, know, you call it physics, you call it poo poo. I don't know what language to use because we are on air. But human waste in your socket way, how can we use the waste to generate power? It's simply by developing a biogas machine. Everybody in this country has waste. Everybody in this, uh, uh, in this country has uh, toilets, has uh, a sewage system. Every, as I want to deny, every house and Waste is a continuous thing from humans. You must eat. And when you eat, you must have waste. So this is the easy way to go. How do I explain? When you have waste in your socket way, over time, if you go through the normal biodegradation of feces or waste or poo-poo in your socket way or your pit, toilet, it we produce the end product of bio um, uh, methane gas or hydrogen sulfide gas. Those gases are wasting. If you develop a biogas machine, all you need to do is to channel a pipe into the um, socket way. I don't know, into your septic tank. I don't know how, how you can understand what I'm trying to say. You put a pipe to it. The, Make sure we convert this methane gas or hydrogen sulfide gas to energy. Use it to power your fan, your light, your TV, your AC, your borehole. The only issue here is you need to poo poo to have light. The day you refuse to poo poo, you will sleep inside it. <laughs> you will sleep inside okay, it. Uh, Dr. Brattis, <laughs> so what's the economic effect of this alternative source of power? Yeah. What's the economic effect? Number one, uh, 
it's not like it's, 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 it's a perfect alternative to solar because it's not something that after like one year, six months, or two years, you need to be replacing batteries. No. This one, go and poo poo. Poo poo so that you can have the end product of methane gas or hydrogen sulfide gas. Is that supposed to be a problem? Okay, but what I'm thinking. In most of these countries that practice this biogas as an alternative source, they have a central sewage system. That's what they practice. So every every um, soak away is linked. But in Nigeria, those don't, that doesn't exist. So how is it going to work for a government to take this as a new strategy, as uh, compared to hydro, when the the sewage system is not connected? You see, the truth is not like you said. This technology will be easier for people that owns hotels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hotel, maybe um, event places where you have massive influx, influx of, of people. It will be much easier for them. But Nigeria being a case study, we, I don't know, I don't want to say we had too many things that we never planned for, that we didn't think about, that we never envisaged that will come up in the future, which is something like this. If the government want to develop a central system where they can use such waste, it's simple. Maybe at the beginning, we get Ministry of Environment, they will come to people's uh, homes and discharge your uh, waste for you. But they usually do it before. Yes, that's true. When somebody suck away, it's feed up. Mm. Come Have you not seen them come in, you pay them or something, or they will come and collect it or take it to a central location. So the government can develop a central system where you go to people's houses and pick up this waste, put it there. But there are some challenges, I must tell you. You know, one truth about science is discovery. You have four and a days, you have some little pick up here and there. The only problem is, will people be willing to adhere to some instructions such as the waste that you want to use to develop energy, you, you, you must not be connecting it to your um, um, kitchen, to your kitchen where you wash your plates. Those your normal household detergent and soap and what have you that you use, even in the bedroom, can contaminate the biodegradable, the biodegradable stages where the methane gas or other sort of gas are being produced as the end point. So there is a special kind of um, detergent that you are expected to use. That's where problem will come. Will people be willing to adhere to doing that so that government can now come and collect the waste later? Or will they now develop a system where your poo will be channeled to a separate um, 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 suck away in your compound? That will be completely different from where your waste coming from your bathing. After getting the waste from mm. your uh, water, the, the one in the kitchen, where they will be going to. If you can separate it, it will be easy for government to use. I don't know if I get what I'm saying. Uh -huh. But if we cannot separate it, then it is uh, all matter to his own, uh, to your own matter to itself. That means you will be the one individual person to do that in your own compound. Where you will have to a way of channeling your waste to a separate sock away. Then you now maybe change some of the things you use uh, so that the waste does not get contaminated by your normal daily detergent and soap and what have you, or oil spillage from the kitchen and all that have you. That, 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 let me also say something quickly. One of the reasons why this is the way to go it, the, this methane gas and hydrogen sulfide gas is not only going to be used by individuals to be powering your fan light and TV. You will use it to be cooking. You, you, you don't get the point. Mm. You, there's a burner. There's a burner. Mm. 
You also connect it to that same suck away, then it will be sucking the same methane gas, hydrogen sulfide gas. You use it to cook. And 